Good evening. Good evening. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, I'm R.C. Blakes. If this is your first time uh, coming to my channel, I'm R.C. Blakes, and it's my privilege to be able to share with you today. Um, <clears throat> I have something on my heart that I want to talk about. As many of you know that have, those of you that have been following or have been a part of my community for a while, you know that I've been uh, studying um, the narcissist. I'm a pastor. And <clears throat> I don't feel very well, so if you hear me coughing, that's why. I'm a pastor, and when I started looking at um, just the subject of narcissism, I realized that I deal with um, this type of person quite a lot, um, more so than um, I realize, you know. Um, and so it became very intriguing to me. And I think the more I, the more I study it, uh, the better equipped I am to thank you, every, everybody that's coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, the better equipped I am to really uh, deal with people and to help people because here's the reality. Um, while usually in church we um, paint a picture that our greatest enemy is Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you may call him, the reality is that our greatest uh, enemy that he uses, should I say, the greatest tool of the enemy, Satan, would be people. And if you don't know how to manage your relationship with people, uh, you can be taken for quite a ride. Um, so there's this, there's this other dimension of this study that I'm, I've, I've been hearing, you know, I've heard the term used. Uh, but I just recently started kind of reading and just hearing what other people have to say about it. And as I say all the time, I'm no therapist. I'm no psychologist. I don't want to ever, um, I don't ever want to ever disrespect uh, those persons who have gone to school and this is what they do. Never want to disrespect that. I just, I'm just a student and um and I'm trying to learn, and so I'm always open for um, instruction, correction, whatever you want to call it, because I know this is not my forte. I'm a preacher, you know what I mean? Um, but there's this, there's this thing that uh, is called hoovering, hoovering, um, that is a term used in the whole process of understanding narcissistic abuse. And narcissistic abuse is simply emotional abuse, uh, primarily, that, um, that can lead to other forms of abuse, but it's primarily, emo primarily emotional abuse at the hands of a person who has no empathy for you. This is a person that will use you, will abuse you, will uh, drain you completely dry, um, you know, break you to no end and never feel any ways repentant about it. And the interesting thing is that they can do this, they can, they can break you, they can empty you, they can crush you, and they can seem to exit your life. And then periodically, they'll circle back around and find a way to get back into your life. And you don't even know how it happened. Uh, what is hoovering? It's named after, you, when you look at the term hoover, hoovering, it's named after the vacuum cleaner. And it's intended to imply what? The process of the narcissist sucking you back in. That's hoovering. It's the process that they use uh, to suck you back in. And uh, it's typically 
subtle. You know, it's kind of like the Bible says that the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the in the garden. It's subtle, but it's effective. It's effective when you do not understand what you're dealing with. It's effective. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you understand the process, when you understand um, the game, because that's what this is. You thought it was a relationship and all the while it was really just a game. You know, you put your whole heart into this. They, they never the narcissist never put his or her heart into this. This you was always for you, uh, for the narcissist, rather, you were always a mark. You were always a source of supply. And once they got what they wanted from you, they moved out of your life. And then at a certain point, they, they, they circled back around in some kind of way. They sucked you back in. They hoovered and got you back into their grips, back under their spell, back into that place where they what can control you. The Bible says um, uh, in Proverbs 7, 21 through 23, it says, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With her words, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. She manipulated uh, him. With her, with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her. Watch this. He goeth after her straightway. She manipulated him and she caused him to yield to the point that he runs after her. And the Bible says straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasteth to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. She she manipulated and controlled him to the point that he ran after her not understanding that this would end in his life being taken. And that's kind of the spell that the narcissist uh, will cast over uh, his or her victim. You'll be, you'll be to a point where you don't even know how. You're sitting there in the office with the consulate and you're trying to figure out how did I let this person back into my life? How did I get back into this situation? This is how some of the stuff we're going to discuss tonight are the reasons why um, a person that is physically abusive can get you to let your guard down and let them back in time and time and time and time again. Um, now, hoovering is how the narcissist, listen to this very carefully, Hoovering is how the narcissist manipul manipulates you into breaking no contact. Hoovering is how the narcissist manipulates you into breaking no contact. When you've made up your mind, no contact is when you've made up your mind, this is a toxic individual. And I do not need this person in my life. And I'm going to cut this person off and you cut them off and no contact means exactly what it says. No contact. And you've gone two, three, four, five, six months and you've not contacted this person. And then all of a sudden they pop up in your space and you're trying to figure out. Thank you, Larita. God bless you. Thank you so much. You're trying to figure out, um, you know, I went six months without this individual. And now I'm back under their spell again. How did they get back into my life? Hoovering. The Bible says in Ephesians 427, neither give place to the devil. There's some things we're going to discuss when I'm when I'm at the end of this that I think would fit under not, not giving place to the devil. And you have to begin to see this person, uh, this narcissist, as the devil. I believe, I believe that 
Lucifer was the first narcissist. I believe the narcissist spirit emanates from Satan. I believe that with all of my heart. So you have to begin to see this person as the actual devil. You, you have to have that kind of respect for um, the damage this person can do, the power this person has, and uh, the impact this person can have on your life. Yes, when you start thinking about some of the stuff we're getting ready to, to discuss, it all ties in. It is the, it is, some of this stuff is the means of a person that's not ordained for your life, maintaining an ungodly soul tie. And you trying to figure out why can't I get rid of this person? Some of the stuff we're getting ready to discuss. Now, why do narcissists hoover? Well, a couple of things. I believe that narcissists hoover, they, they employ this tactic to suck you back in when you've successfully gone no contact and their ego is bruised that you have proven you can do without them and their ego is bruised so they employ a tactic to pull you back in because they feed off of your pain they um number two they thrive on controlling you is that Pastor Preston Jones? Thank you, sir. God bless you. They thrive on controlling you. So they, you know, narcissists will, will behave like they're out of your life and they'll let a certain amount of time go by and they'll circle back just to prove to themselves, I can control you. I can manipulate you. And, and ideally for the, for the narcissist, this should be a lifetime um, cycle that they move in and out of your life when they choose to, how they choose to. And they can always come back and suck you back in. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship you're in, they, 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 they find a way to destroy that and to pull you back in, back under their control. Um, they, they thrive on controlling you. They've seen that you've successfully gone on, you've gone no contact, and now they, their ego is bruised, and so they step in to pull you back in. Number three, they need sex or money. Narcissist Hoover, because they need sex or money, mostly. They don't want you, but they don't want anyone else to have you either. That's true. They don't want you. And in a lot of cases, they are running this same game on multiple people. They, got, they have multiple people tied up in this same cycle, this same web of deceit, you know, manipulation and control. Uh, <coughs> so hoovering gives them the, the ability to regain a sense of control over you. Um... Now let's look at let's look at something here. Oh, let's just have a brief conversation. I can't talk very long tonight. Here's some of the things that here's some of the things that narcissists do when they are hoovering, when they are trying to pull you back in, suck you back into their web. They behave like uh, the relationship isn't over. You know, you all had this massive blow up and, um, you know, it was understood that you don't want, you want nothing else to do with him or her. And um, you've moved on, you know, and this individual steps in and they just behave like, you know, what we just said two or three days ago was not said. Um, it is not over. You know, I don't care what you say. Um, they just behave like like they're going to just um, force you. They, you know, they'll, they'll just uh, you have a massive blow up, maybe even a physical fight. And a day or so later. 
You tell him, I don't want anything else to do with you. Get out of my life. Maybe even call the police. And then, you know, two or three days later, they'll send you a message. You know, how you doing? Just checking on you. Just checking on you, you know. Um, but where are you going for lunch? Where I'm going for lunch? What you mean where I'm going for lunch? We just had a fight. I'm done with you. I don't want nothing to do with you. But they, be they behave like, and they'll continue harassing you as if nothing has changed at all, to the point that you begin to wonder, you know, am I losing my mind? Or, or did this person just punch me in my jaw? Did this person, you know, did I just not kick this person out of my house? Did I just not tell this person, I want nothing else to do with you? And now this person is behaving like I was just dreaming. They'll behave like, you know, your relationship isn't over. And they'll, they'll be so persistent with it. Hello, my baby, Mars, I love you. They'll be so persistent with it that, you know, you find yourself kind of buying in. And, you know, then you start having these crazy thoughts um, like, you know, they didn't mean any harm. I can tell. They, I can tell he didn't mean any harm. Look, look at how he talking. He didn't even know what he was doing. You know, oh. And you just start having this, um, what's the word I'm looking for, man? My mind is moving slow tonight. You, you just start to having this, this mindset like because they're behaving like things are normal, maybe they are. You know, um, they, just, they, just, they just act like the relationship is normal. Nothing's happened. You know, nothing's happened. That, that it would be like Lisa and I firing off guns at one another tonight and she kicking me out of the house and I don't want nothing else to do with you. And she get all on social media and tell y'all uh, I'm done with him. He's a no good low down dog. Da, 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 da. And then tomorrow, you know, two days later. So I, I call her as if nothing has happened, as if everything is normal, you know, call and say like, you know, I'm on my way. What you want me to bring you? What I want you to bring me? I don't want you to bring me nothing. Don't come to this house. But that's that's mind control. That's a psychological maneuver. That's a psychological maneuver. Behaving like the relationship isn't over, you know. You know, you, you, you move on and they, they popping up uh, at, your, at your spot with your new person, you know, talking about this my woman or this my man. No, 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 no. Behaving like the relationship isn't over. That's a means of what? Sucking you back in. Um, they have a tendency to, when they're trying to suck you back in, they have a tendency to send you um, gifts that you didn't ask for. The exact stuff you you love, they know exactly what you love. So they'll send you they'll send you things, you know. And one of the Bible says the life is more than things, you know. Life is more than that because when a narcissist knows that you're moved by things, they will use materialism, they will use things to suck you back in. Anything to get your attention, anything, watch this, to make you think about them. Because you have to understand that this is not like a normal relationship. You know how you have some relationships when they end, it's over, you know, and he goes his way, she goes her way. And they're going to be cordial when they see one another because they were two normal people that just figured out it doesn't work. But then when you have a relationship with a narcissist, and it, it ends, it's like the damage they've done to you emotionally leaves a hook in your brain that they can attach to with you being unaware and they can reel you back in at any point. See, this is the, this is the puppet master. This is the puppet master. This is the puppet master. And so you're trying to figure out why is it that I can't get rid of so-and-so? You know, I got rid of him. I got rid of her. 
no problem, but with, with, with this one, I can't, is because this person has intentionally put a hook in your brain that they can return to and they can pull you back in through using certain tactics. And so sometimes they'll use gifts. Like if, if you're a materialist, um, that's one of the weaknesses of, of being a person that's, you know, just caught up in materialism. You're easily manipulated by material things. If you're a person that views material things as a symbol of love, all a narcissist needs to do is go and get you a, you know, a Louis Vuitton bag or Gucci bag or whatever this, whatever that. Have that dropped off at your job, wrapped up in a nice big bowl, and all of a sudden you, f you forgot all about how he cheated on you with uh, seven different women, how he brought STDs home to you, how he physically attacked you. You forget about all of that because he knows that if I want to get back in, draw, draw this woman back in, all I got to do is send her something she likes. Um, number three, they, you know, th this is, this is a major, major one right here. The narcissist is a professional apologizer when it is necessary to draw you back in. Now, typically they are not, they are not sincerely apologetic, but they can they can behave apologetically if it's necessary to draw you back in and to get you to let your guard down. Uh, I think that was Ram Ramona, I think. Thank you. They, they, number three, they apologize vehemently. You know, it kind of reminds me of... Um, uh, the Nutty Professor 2, I think it was, where Eddie Murphy um, is playing the, you know, the egomaniac, and he's on his knees in front of a, a crowd outside a club, and he's, please, please forgive me, please forgive me, please, please. And then no sooner as she um, gives in, he snaps right back into character because it was all an act. It was never really sincere. It was never genuine. And one of the tactics the narcissist will use when hoovering is to apologize vehemently, maybe even go as far as apologizing on social media, you know, just, you know, just standing outside the window, singing your favorite love song, just apologizing. But you have to always remember this is an act to do what? To get to that hook. To get to that hook that he left or she left in your brain, because women do this to men as well. You got to understand that. To get to that hook. To get to that hook. <coughs> um, they'll also use indirect manipulation. If they can't get to you directly, see, like, you know, you think about apologizing sending gifts, uh, behaving like the relationship isn't really over, all of those things imp imply that they have some form of direct contact with you, some form of direct contact with you. But in the event that they don't have any direct contact with you, they'll go a different route. They'll use friends, they'll use children, they'll use family members, you know, um, they'll, they'll, they'll convince your mother if they have a relationship with your mom. That's, you know, they'll, they'll convince your mother that um, they love you so much and they just don't understand why it didn't work between the two of you. Um, you know, and, and they'll ease up to your children and they'll use the babies, you know. Um, I don't know why your mama broke up our family and I love your mama with all of my heart. Wouldn't you like to see our family together? You know, now so all of a sudden family is a great value, but 
never married you, had a child with you, but never, never married you, never wanted to go to the altar, but now family values are high on their list of, you know, they'll use indirect manipulation, indirect manipulation, you know, indirect, I, as a pastor, for instance, this is why I say this is helpful to me in what I do as a pastor, I find that people try to use, have tried to use, and maybe even successfully did it in days gone by when I wasn't conscious. People try to use my uh, influence to manipulate others. You know, they'll come to me and have, they'll have a private meeting with me about a situation in their relationship and want to get me to side with them and I'll sit there and I'll listen to them and I'll listen to them. And uh, then finally I'll get around to, well, there are two sides to every story. You know, I I'm glad to have heard your side, but, you know, let me talk to so-and-so. And sometimes that is a tactic uh, to either get me to influence so-and-so to give in, oh, he's a good man, you know, give him another chance. Or it, it could be a tactic uh, to, to have me to call for so-and-so and him or her to meet me in the, in the office so that there can be what? Contact made again. And then when that contact is made again in the presence of our pastor. Now I can be apologetic. Now I can do what? All I need is some contact to be able to get that hook that I left in your brain and to re-trigger that. Is this making sense to y'all? So indirect manipulation, indirect manipulation. Um, and then of course, they'll declare, watch this. Here's a big one. Here's a big one. Watch this one now. Watch this one. Here's a big one. I've changed. I've seen the error of my ways. I've changed. I met God. I know Jesus now. I met, I met, I met, I know Jesus now. I've changed. I'm not the same man. I'm not. And then there you go to crying. I know. I know you. I know you've been praying for me, and I'm sorry for all I put you through. But I've I've changed. And I, I want you to know I love you. I love you. I love you. I never love nobody else like I love you. You the only one for me. I've changed. And then they get that emotion out of you. And now what? You're opening up and they're getting that hook and they reel you back in for another round. And it's ideal. It's ideal. Once you get in there, it may be ideal for, you know, a few days or a week, however the cycle cycle goes. And then all of a sudden it just shifts again and you right back into the same predicament that you were in before you broke off with this individual the last time. Declarations of love. They, nobody can make you believe they love you like a narcissist. Last time I checked, real love does. Real love does. You know, uh, I tell my wife pretty much every day I love her, you know, but my wife can see my love by the way I handle her, the way I treat her, because real love does. Real love doesn't have to campaign because real love does. The evidence of real love is in its behavior. Right? Um... Okay, let me see some. Okay, here's another good one. They will fake a crisis. They'll go as far as posting it on social media. You know, um, they'll, they'll go to the doctor, for instance, you know, and maybe, maybe somehow 
understand that they, you know it's a situation where they have overnight you know testing or something and they're in the bed with the hospital gown on they'll take pictures of themselves and they'll post something like they come out if one of these one of these church narcissists they'll say something like pray for me pray for me I need prayer tonight you know and then they'll tag everybody that they know you're friends with so that they can again indirectly reach you by way of the people that they know are still in your circle. They'll create this fake crisis that they need help, that they're in trouble because after all, they know they, didn't, they never loved you, but they know that you love them. And so the aim is to get you dun, 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 come and save the day. You got to learn that you're not the savior. You have to learn that you're not the savior. You have to learn, you know, one of the things that I've, I've been looking at um, relative to the narcissist and the question is always, can the narcissist change? And of course, psychologists say no. Or should I say, at least most of them say no. Now, as a um, as a minister and one that believes in the power of God, I can't honestly say, well, I'm completely satisfied with that answer. But one thing I have learned, you know, I was looking in the Bible at a dude by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, who I also believe we're going to look at. Who I also believe is a is a depiction, a model of narcissism. And God broke him down to where he, he almost well, he did lose his mind and went wild and God completely isolated him. And one of the things that I believe is necessary for the deliverance, if there's if there's such a thing as, a, as the deliverance of a narcissist, is that. You have to let them go and you have to let God, I think only the power of God, breaking them down, breaking them down is the answer. You stepping in, saving the day is never the answer. You have to let life happen to them. As long as you keep stepping in every time they have a crisis and you keep saving the day and destroying yourself, all you're doing is emboldening your, 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 um, Strengthening, you are, what's, what's another word? You know what I'm talking about. They come up with these, these, these fake crises to alarm you, you know. I'm, I'm so sick, I'm so sick. You step in and you get hurt. That's exactly right. You step in and you get hurt. You have to learn, man, like I've had to learn. See, because I have a very big heart. I am a loyalist. I'm an, I'm, an, I'm, I'm, I'm an unhealthy empath. By that I mean I'll do myself damage trying to see the other person's perspective. I'll give you my money when I need it. You know, money that I'm, I need, I'll wind up giving it to you. Well, you know, I'm learning now, though, that I'm not the Savior. And I recommend you to Jesus. As I move on about my life, I recommend you to Jesus. God bless you. Enabling, that was the word I was looking for. I recommend you to Jesus. But whatever this is you got going on, I'm not the one. I'm not the Savior. I'm your brother. I'm not your savior. So I recommend you to Jesus because what you're working with is not something that I can. You have to learn that because they'll fake crises to just keep what drawing you back in, drawing you back in. Um, and then they'll 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 also bait you in with drama. And I think. Um, They'll just create drama, you know, just create drama. You know, like if you have kids with them, 
you know, they'll, they'll raise questions about uh, anything to get you to respond, to react. You know, they'll ask questions like, you know, what's going on with my children? I don't think my children being raised right. You know, and they'll, they'll just leave a message or something. Anything to get you to what? React and call and get you all on the phone and, 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 you know, going at it like that, going at it like that. And the whole while you don't realize that while you're going at it like that, they're accessing your soul again. They're, they're acts, you're angry, but they're accessing your soul again. And what they're doing is they're watering the seeds. They're watering the seeds that they left planted in your soul. And before you know it, now that soul tie is rekindled. You're angry, your heart is beating, and your adrenaline is flowing. But then the next day, they're on your mind all day. They use, the, they use drama to get back in. And so then they drop you, the next day they'll drop you a text message like, you know, sorry for coming off, so da 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 can we talk about it? And now before you know it, you caught up again, you confused again. You confused again. <coughs> you confused again. This is how I'm trying to show you. This is how, and along with a, you know, a million other tactics, I suppose. Thank you, Rosalind. This is how you keep falling back into the situation with the person you know you ain't supposed to be with. They keep pulling you back in because when they abuse you, the Bible says um, uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. In other words, something you want so bad and you don't get it, it makes the heart sick. And I believe that, you know, that could that could apply in this context to when a narcissist does the kind of damage to you, to your soul, to your self-esteem that like they do. It leaves that hook in there. All they need is just proximity. And they can keep pulling you in and waste your whole life, pull you and abuse you some more, pull you and abuse you again, pull you and abuse you again. And you look around, you've wasted your whole life in and out of this cycle. Well, you, you were never out of it. You just didn't realize you weren't out of it because the narcissist was playing the game the whole time. Now, let me see something here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> um, let's see. Okay, here's some things that we, we, we should employ, some practical things we should employ to uh, circumvent hoovering. Change your phone number. Change your phone number, change your email, um, block this person on all social media outlets, block this person on all social media outlets. Um, another thing that I think is imperative, having the conversation with all of the people in your inner circle that you want no messages brought to you from this individual. You want nothing shared of yours on this individual's pages on social media. You want nothing shared to your page from their page. If they, if they choose to have a relationship with this person, make certain that, that you make all of the persons in your inner circle understand that you want them to bring none of this person's business into your world again. That's important because the people in your inner circle will be used as pawns in the whole process if they're not aware. And see, in a lot of instances, they are made to believe that this is a great guy. This is a great girl. But they have to understand how strongly you feel about them not imposing on your personal space and bringing this person back into your life. You have to make certain that you have that conversation. <coughs> um, and of course, in your own mind. OK, let me see. You got to pay attention to the signs. 
and, and, and know yourself, you know, when you find yourself being hoovered, you know, you find yourself being drawn back in, start paying attention to you. Start being able to identify the signs that I'm falling, that this is, you know, so that you can pull yourself back and bring yourself back to what? Reality. Bring yourself back to reality. You know, rule your own spirit. Set a firm rule in your heart that you will not contact, acknowledge, respond or react to the narcissist in any way. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, you're not going to react, respond, acknowledge, don't care. Nothing, no, no response, no reaction from me. And then you need to find a support group. If you've really been severely damaged by um, narcissistic abuse, you need to find a support group. You need to find some kind of counseling agency, some kind of, you know, some kind of support group for people who are suffering with that so that you can regain a sense of self. But the main thing is you have to develop a sense of consciousness so that you can become aware of your emotional triggers because that is what, um, that is what the narcissist plays on. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Denise. That is what the narcissist plays on, are your emotional triggers. And see, this is why I say, uh, listen to me, because I'm done now. I've been on here too long. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this is why I say, um, we breed, you know, we breed our men to think like narcissists and to behave like narcissists. Because, you know, young men all over America are being trained every day to identify and to manipulate the emotional triggers of a young woman. I was taught that, you know, from the men in my life you go no further than the barbershop. They'll teach you exactly how to identify a woman's emotional triggers and how to push those buttons. So men are bred for narcissism. And if there's in that man's background a sense of abandonment or abuse, you know, it just, you know, but in, in, in general, typically men are taught to behave narcissistically even if they're not narcissists. And if a man is well adjusted, he eventually grows up, he matures, and he comes to a point, and he comes to a place where um, he has to reconcile his behavior with his, with his core. And when I came to that point of maturity, and I said, the way I'm behaving, you know, versus who I am, it's not lining up, I can't reconcile it. So then he begins to change, a narcissist, doesn't have it in him to change, not without a divine intervention. Not without a divine intervention. Queen Shar, thank you, thank you so much. From Europe, looks like. So that's my little spill for tonight. I apologize if I'm low energy. I'm not feeling my best, but I wanted to get this out, and we're gonna we're gonna keep looking at this man because I. Cognitive dissonance, exactly. I'm glad you brought that up. It's, it's, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. It's where you, you know, it's where you know what's right and you're doing the opposite. And so there's this conflict within you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm get off of here. I love you all and I thank God for you. Hey, if this is your first time on my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. I'd re really love for you to join, join, our, join our community. Also, um, go to my website, rcblakes.com, and subscribe for my email list. And when you do so, there's this book I wrote, which I think is one of my best books, actually. It's no longer in print. It's called um, 
the laws of manifesting your vision. You can, you can get that book um, free. And when you subscribe to my email list for free, you get a little prompting and you'll be able to download the ebook, The Laws of Manifesting Your Vision. As just, you know, a gift from me and Lisa saying thank you for being a part of our family. And of course, all of my books are at um, Amazon. Um, I just love you all. Let me pray for you, if I may. Father, I thank you for. I thank you for my family. I thank you for every person represented here. And now, God, I ask you to, for those that are struggling with some of the stuff that we've talked about tonight, God, I thank you for giving them a sense of clarity and allowing my words, dear God, to bring them into a place of freedom from this bondage that they've been in. And now, Father, I thank you that everything that does not belong in their lives, you're dismissing in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, God, I give you praise and glory and honor for the freedom that is theirs in Jesus' name. All right. I love you all. Thank God for you. And uh, hey, listen, listen as well. I'm going to be in Orlando, Queenology. We're going to be in Orlando with Queenology, August the 30th and 31st. And I still have some seats left. I need you all to help me to uh, sell these last seats. I don't know how many. But this is going to be my last stop for this year. My schedule won't allow me to go anywhere else with Queenology this year. I'll be traveling other places for other people's um, conferences. So Orlando is going to be our last stop for Queenology, the intimate experience for 2019. And uh, next year, we're looking to go international, Canada, Europe. Uh, and we're going, thank you, is it Shana? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going um, we're cruising. We're going to cruise next year with Queenology. And by then, hopefully I'll have the book or well, not. Hopefully I will have the book Kingology finished. And it's going to be the cruise is going to be bringing the, the kings and the queens together and uh, strengthening the kingdom. I like that. Strengthening the kingdom. So Queenology, the intimate experience 2019 it's pretty much shutting it down in Orlando in about a week and a half, August the 30th and the 31st. Still some seats. I need you all to call all your friends in the Orlando area. Well, anywhere that's, you know, and let them know that um, that we're going to be there with with Queenology. And I need you all to help me to sell these last seats. All right. God bless you all. I love you and I thank God for all of you. Thank you for sowing into my life, too means the world to me. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Remember, you're on top and you're going higher. God has more in store for you. So guess what? I'll see you at the top.